and participated in one of the first solar IPOs in the 1990s. Uh, we are risk averse and we're way too comfortable. Um, and it's just a huge problem we've got in terms of capital. Um, we've got Henry Vohovic here who's working with Cleantech North, who's a serial entrepreneur and an angel investor and started the National Angel Organization of Investors and he knows exactly what I'm talking about. <coughs> we really have an emasculated venture capital industry, we have a risk averse Bay Street, and yet we've got Canadians doing this all over the world and we've got the capability and we've got the capital and we, we, we just have to start understanding. There are some things that we're doing and I'm personally quite critical of the Harper government as you'd expect on some of these issues, but to their great credit, um, they've made some changes to the tax code and so on recently that have made it easier for foreign capital to come into Canada uh, for Canadian startups. Basically, uh, partly to paper over the fact that we're not willing to put up our own capital into our own people. We've got the people. We've got great entrepreneurs in this country, so it is a challenge, but it's not one I can resolve in the next 30 seconds. Um, the couple of other things, um, uh, the, the last mile a disposable, a disposal and reuse, that's a, a longer conversation and one that I'm not particularly skilled at answering, but I do believe it's a design issue, uh, fundamentally, and, and I think it'll be driven by economics, first and foremost. But that brings us to the question of government. Um, I went to my first meeting on cap and trade in 1988 at number 10 Downing Street under Margaret Thatcher. 22 years later, we ain't there. I don't think we're going to get there. Honestly, I really, really don't think we'll get there. And I don't think there's even a huge appetite for a carbon tax in this. India has just in brought in a carbon tax, a coal levy, right? But we're not willing to do this. And we, and we berate the Indians you know, and others for not getting their act together. You know, we're not serious about this stuff, and I don't think we're going to get serious. I don't think the political consensus is there. So what I do think is going to happen is that, again, raw economics, raw supply and demand is going to kick in, um, and uh, it will drive change. The problem is it will be more chaotic, it will be more socially painful, and it will be without the jobs and wealth creation that come with getting ahead of the curve. I just don't see any way around it. I, I really don't, and I think we're, we're kidding ourselves, and we have been kidding ourselves in Copenhagen. Uh, we're heading into the Cancun meeting at the end of this year. It's a disaster. It's a train wreck. Nothing's happening. Meanwhile, the Chinese get on with this stuff. They keep developing the technology, and they're going to sell it to us. You know, um, we need policy. I'm not anti-government, but governments are bankrupt. There's no money left in the till. We blew it all on the stimulus. And uh, uh, we barely have enough uh, foreign exchange reserves in the major central banks of the world to underpin a viable currency system. We can't, there's no more money. So uh, what governments can do is set standards, right? fuel efficiency standards, they can do procurement, they can remove perverse subsidies, and that's what's going to happen. Uh, you'll start seeing the perverse subsidies for the incumbents starting to be pulled away, and that will level the playing field. That's probably more effective and more powerful. Or when Walmart three in their $60 billion a year supply chain and say, Go green or give us a 50% discount. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so the last point here is I think um, carbon is a big issue. It's, the, it's big enough to occupy all of us for the rest of our lives, but it's not the only one. This year, I encourage you to pay attention to what is called the TEAB report. Uh, this is on biodiversity, and it's being uh, written by the uh, chief economist at Deutsche Bank, who actually resigned, uh, this is the largest bank in Germany, who resigned to write this report. It's a series of reports. The first one came out in July, I believe, in, in London, uh, around business. And this is about the economics of ecosystem services and biodiversity loss. Most of us aren't aware that we're losing 30 to 50,000 species a year on this planet. And as David Suzuki would say, we've become the force of nature ourselves. 30 to 50,000 species. This will have to be dealt with from a moral, ethical standpoint, but most immediately, we're running out of all these things that we've taken for granted that stabilize the atmosphere, that provide us with clean water, that provide us with um, uh, medicines, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's about fundamentally reimagining who we are, our role in this planet, and the opportunities that arise from moving to what I call Earth 3.0, sustainable prosperity. I'll let you read for yourself before I get off the stage and we have a conversation.
why wouldn't we want to do this? So it's a great pleasure to be with you all this morning. Uh, it shows that we all want to do this. And uh, I'm looking forward to conversations, uh, both perhaps now for a few minutes before coffee and during the course of the day. Thank you. you read for yourself before I get off the stage and we have a conversation. <laughs> Why wouldn't we want to do this? So it's a great pleasure to be with you all this morning. Uh, it shows that we all want to do this. And uh, I'm looking forward to conversations, uh, both perhaps now for a few minutes before coffee and during the course of the day. Thank you. I participated in one of the first solar IPOs in the 